Tonight is going to be entitled Dancing from Heavenly Places. Uh, uh, the teaching tonight is going to be uh, entitled Dancing from Heavenly Places. And what we're going to explore tonight is dancing uh, with intentionality. We're going to explore dancing uh, in the spirit realm. And we're going to explore governing the atmosphere through dance. Okay, so those are the things that we're going to uh, explore. Lord, we just thank you for this teaching tonight. Lord God, I just speak an awakening to every person. Lord God, I decree that their spirits are alert and vibrant to receive this word. Lord Jesus, I decree ca uh, tiredness is being cast down. Weariness of the day is being cast down right now. And a refreshing anointing is coming up on every dance minister right now in the name of Jesus. I, de I decree they're shifting to a place of of eagerly receiving this word, Lord God, and receiving this revelation. And by the time that this uh, teaching ends, they will have shifted into new revelation and understanding of what it means to be a dance minister in this hour and in this season, uh, Lord Jesus, of your kingdom. I just cancel out any dullness of hearing. I cancel out, uh, Lord God, any lack of understanding. I cancel out all confusion and frustration and discord. I cancel out all fear and anything that would hinder them, uh, Lord God, from really receiving this word. I decree that it is broken right now in the name of Jesus, and they are released all the more in the spirit of freedom and liberty to shift forward, Lord God, as your dance ministers for this season in the kingdom. I just decree that over there, them, Lord God. I decree the glory and the anointing is becoming all the more powerful upon them each second of this teaching, Lord God, and that they will uh, become even more enlightened in the strength, uh, Lord God, of who they are as your glory carriers, Lord God, and as your warriors and your intercessors of movement. I just seal that prayer even now, decreed it is so, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So as we discuss dancing with intention and dancing from heavenly places, it's important to understand that when we dance during praise and worship, we are one army. Therefore, our moves are done in like sets of four, sets of eight, sets of 12. Sometimes they're repetitious uh, because we are all flowing as one. This also makes uh, movement easy and it allows us to attack the enemy as one body. It also allows us to take up territory as one army. So it's important that if you are leading that you are uh, ministering moves in sets of four, sets of eight, sets of 12, and that you're recognizing that people are following you and your unity is very important. If you do uh, ministers um, 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 movements where you're doing three and four movements in one set. You want to make sure that those movements are very clear and very precise so that people can follow you. Uh, it's also important to, to make sure that you're inside of the spirit realm during that time, because when you're inside of the spirit realm, everyone, um, is, is being led by the Holy Spirit, and so they're able to flow accordingly. Uh, it's, it, it's very key not, uh, not to start off flowing in movements where you're doing four or five movements and you're just moving or uh, what have you because you're, you're just now uh, approaching the enemy, uh, taking up territory, uh, what have you. And a lot of this is going to be explained as we go along in the teaching. And so when you're doing that and you're just doing a whole bunch of movement, uh, it, it's very hard to follow you initially. So it's important that when you first start off doing praise and worship, that you start off in sets of four, sets of eight, and sets of 12. Okay. If you just came on the call, please mute your phone. Uh, uh, so we can block out the echo and everything. Uh, you can mute your phone by pushing start a six, or you can use the mute button. Okay. The enemy hates unity and he hates agreement. He, 
because he cannot penetrate it. So even if one or two people feel led to do something unique from the team, it's important to communicate that so that we can cover you as when we're ministering, doing praise and worship, we're all on a battleground. So if you go off and you start dancing in the, you know, up and down the aisles all by yourself and we're not sure what you're doing or what the purpose of that is, you're actually putting yourself in the enemy's line to be hit and even exposing us to be hit. So it's important to let someone know, hey, I'm, I feel led to go dance down the aisle and, uh, you know, and uh, just uh, praise and worship down the aisle. So someone would know what you're doing. Doing that for it's also important to have a reason uh, for for you doing that and not just going down the aisle and just start ministering praise and worship and nobody know why you broke off from the team to do that so sometimes the Lord may have you uh, do that to take up more territory you may be releasing a spirit of praise and worship or free worship in the atmosphere you may be coming against the spirit of heaviness or or something like that uh, but all Often when you feel led to make those type of decisions, the Lord will give you revelation if it's really him. And it's important to share that information with someone, especially the person that you is leading uh, at that time or someone that is um, kind of the overseer of the ministry or something. So they will know how to bring the rest of the group in unison where they can flow with whatever you're doing. And so a lot of times you probably see videos online where they go get crowns and, and uh, banners and all of these things that those things are great uh, uh, or what have you, but it is important to communicate, Hey, I'm going to go get a banner. I feel led to go get a crown right now. I feel ready to go get a sword so that people will know what you're doing. And so then they can actually uh, come forth with you and, and begin to dance in unison in the spirit with you, with those, um, with, when you, uh, break off and, and, and add those type of praise and worship movements and, uh, presentations to the dance, uh, ministry doing praise and worship. So, uh, that's very important. Um, you're on that battleground fighting for the people, the atmosphere and the community and the region. So a lot of times, uh, when we're dancing, doing praise and worship, we think it's just about us and we're just releasing the spirit of praise and worship. But actually, churches are planted in the community for a reason. They actually were supposed to be um, like uh, hospices and um, community advocates and, and, and places for the community to be able to come and to receive help, to receive assistance, to receive deliverance, to receive healing, uh, to actually release the gospel in those areas of that community uh, so that people can be healed, delivered, and set free, and so that their needs could be met. Uh, but uh, for some reason, uh, churches now, they even though they're in that region or they're in that community, most of the time the neighbors around that church don't even go to that church or they don't even feel that they can rely on that church. But really, that that's what the church is there for. Um, they're there uh, to be an edifice for that community. And so when you are actually ministering praise and worship, you're there to release the glory of God into that community so that the heavens can be open and more of God can come in, more of his glory can come in that community to set the people free, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, uh, to provide, uh, bring provision where, you know, where people have food to eat, where they have clothes, where they have have bills paid and everything that they need. Um, but really what we have today is a lot of the churches aren't able to provide that because they're not sustained by the community. A lot of people that attend the churches in that community come from other areas uh, or whatever the case may be. And then because they're uh, there is a sufficient funds flowing through the church, the community, nor the members are really able to rely on the church. But that wasn't the vision of God for the church. The vision of God for the, was for the church was that we were to release the glory of God and the provision of God in that community. So when you're going forth in praise and worship, you have to understand that you are like a frontline intercessor as a dancer, and you are going forward to break off chains break off uh, 
uh, uh, uh, bondages off of the people so that they could be free to relieve, uh, to receive the presence and glory of God. You're, you're also, uh, uh, releasing God's glory into the atmosphere and opening up the heavens so that the kingdom of heaven can come down to earth and be established in that church where miracle signs and wonders to can flow. So that's really the purpose of praise and worship, um, dance ministry okay so every move you make and every sound you make is heard by the enemy because uh in in communities what we have is we have principalities and powers which are like demonic spirits and uh, uh principality is like a demonic king powers is like a, a demonic spirit that's under that king. And uh, then there are other uh, spirits, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places and, and, and all of those things. And we'll teach that in the third session. But these strongholds rule the community. So that's why sometimes you go into, so let's talk about a, poverty stricken community you go in that community it's very dark it's a lot of poverty it's a lot of murder uh people are are barely making it they're struggling uh you know there's a lot of anger and rage and lots of confrontation uh that is because those principalities and powers are ruling that community and so when you release, so say your church is in that community and you, you go forth on a Sunday and you're starting to move and you go forth in praise and worship, you're actually starting a war with those spirits because those spirits want to stay in that region and they want to rule the people in the atmosphere of that region. But when you start to praise and worship, you are bringing in the kingdom of God and you're bringing in the glory of God. And so you're saying, and no, Jesus is going to reign here. And these spirits like, no, the devil is going to reign here. And so, um, uh, so actually you are at war when you start to praise and worship in the church. Okay. And I'm going to give you scriptures on that. So you, you're starting a war. So the enemy is automatically going to counter attack you. Uh, uh, or what have you, because they want to remain in the people's lives. They want to govern the heavenlies in that community. Uh, they want to stronghold that community in that region. And so every church, every conference really should be designed to establish the kingdom of God in the people and in the earth. And the devil knows this. Uh, and if we don't know this and we don't recognize that we're in a war, it doesn't really matter because we fight and whether we like it or not, we're war and whether we like it or not uh or what have you matthews 11 and 12 and you could just write the scriptures down you don't have to go to them because i'm going to kind of go very fast for the sake of time i know for some of you it's 7 25 but for me it's 10 25 <laughs> so uh, uh matthew 11 and 12 says um uh the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. So really, when you say that I accept Jesus Christ as my savior uh, and you begin to live for God, you're saying that you're willing to suffer violence for the kingdom of heaven and even take the, the, the world by force, by violence for God or what have you. And so when you, uh, as a dancer, you really become a frontline intercessor for that passage of scripture, because you're not only the voice of God in the earth and the glory of God in the earth, you are the movement of God in the earth. And so you have like a threefold anointing upon your life that is bringing violence upon the world's sins upon uh, demonic powers and, and strongholds and you're you're taking back every place that the enemy has said no this belongs to me you like no this belongs to God and so you are in a war whether you like it or not and even as you really begin to flourish in your dance ministry you will find that you will have constant warfare in your life there will always be some kind of struggle or challenge uh, or you feel like you you're always contending for something. That's because you are. And that's because your whole lifestyle says, I praise and worship God. And because your whole lifestyle says, I praise and worship God, you are at war every day. 
whether uh, unlike somebody that comes to church on Sundays and they only worship God on Sundays or they only worship God when they're at a church service, but your whole lifestyle, the anointing on your life says, I dance for God. I glorify God. And so you're always contending with the enemy because of that. Okay. Now doing praise and worship, our initial movement should be done through Ephesians two and six and Ephesians two and six says, and God hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So we seek to dance from the heavenly realms and not from this earthly realm. Therefore, like when we first start praise and worship and the music is going, that, that's great. That Whatever song they playing, it could be our favorite jam. Uh, that's awesome or what have you. But truly, your focus should be getting into the spirit where you can govern the atmosphere and flow freely in movement. Uh, when you uh, watch Manifold Grace dance together, um, uh, initially they're doing warfare moves and they're entering into the spirit realm and their focus on is on entering into the spirit realm. And then when, uh, after about three or five minutes of that, it just looked like they flow in unison, like they have been practicing together when really they have not been practicing the moves, but they're in the spirit. And so the spirit is leading every move. And so everybody's just operating in unison. So you really want to get to that place where you have Shift it from dancing down here, even though you are still physically down here, spiritually, you are dancing from that heavenly place. So even if you start praise, praise and worship starts and you're not in the spirit realm, you may have to minister warfare moves or intercessory movements to shift into the heavenlies. So it really doesn't matter if they sing in, uh, uh, some kind of praise song or, you know, um, I don't know. We worship you in the sanctuary. We worship you. I don't know the words and give you the glory. And, and that's a praise song. And they, they're saying that they worship and they praise God, but you may actually have to do some warfare moves or some intercessory moves to make sure that you're shifting the whole uh, praise and worship team and even the whole atmosphere into the presence of God and into that place of, uh, in the heavenlies where you all can actually govern. Okay. And so your initial movements must have a mindset that I'm moving into a place where I can reign in God's glory. Jeremiah one and 10 says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pluck down. I mean, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So it is important uh, to have that focus of knowing that as a dancer, God has set you in nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build up and to plant. Because when you're moving, no matter if you are pointing your toes and doing ballet, you're doing modern dance, you're doing dramatization, uh, you're miming, you are rooting out, pulling down, destroying, throwing down, building, and planting every time you are doing a move, okay? And a lot of times we don't know that we are doing these things because there haven't really been a, 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 a teaching there, but that's what you're doing. Uh, what the Bible says that in Genesis that when God created the heaven and earth, his spirit moved upon the face of the waters and moved up on the deep. And so his spirit was moving around and helping him to create the heavenlies and the earth. He, you know, his, his spirit was rooting out darkness and, uh, you know, and pulling down what was necessary from the kingdom of heaven into earth to make it materialize. And it was overthrowing uh, darkness and bringing light. And then it was building and manifesting things and planning things. And, uh, so that's what his spirit does. And because you are a dancer, you are God's spirit moving, uh, throughout the earth. Okay. 
And so in Ephesians 6 and 12, it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, what's funny is when Beyonce comes on stage, her initial focus is to own that stage. I hate to use her as an example, but uh, I'm going to use her. Okay, so when she comes on stage, her initial focus is to own that stage and the people she's she's seeking to own the people and she's seeking to assert authority over that atmosphere. Her song and her movements and even how she walks on stage demonstrates and asserts her purpose. You know that she came to rule. And as she said, I came to slay. OK, so it doesn't matter if you like the song that the praise and worship sing, like the words or, 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 or what have you. It's important that you understand that you came to slay. Even for Beyonce, it doesn't matter to her if you like her song, you like her words, you like the movements. You will be drawn into her because she seeks to claim dominion over the atmosphere and the people. Beyonce knows her dominion and she knows her power. So as dance ministers and saints of Jesus, we already have dominion and power over people, atmospheres, regions, and devils. We already have it. In Genesis 1 and 26, it says, and Jesus said, let us make man in his in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over uh, the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Genesis 9 and 2 says, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hands are they delivered. Psalms 8 and 6 says, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast pulled, put all things under his feet. So God has already given you dominion. And I can go on and on with scriptures of how God has given us dominion, but I will digress for now and for the sake of time and see you this teacher so you can look at all the scriptures. So a lot of times we are striving to acquire a dominion and authority and power by whether the people in the atmosphere receive us. So we stand in front of the people and we're like, oh, I got dominion and authority if they like my dance and if they like the move I'm doing. But you already have authority. When Beyonce walk out there, she not saying, oh, I hope they like this move. She like, oh, they going to like this move. They going to like this song and they going to like me. And she walks out there with that level of authority. And that's the authority that you have as a dancer uh, of God. And even just as a child of Christ, that you already have dominion and authority. And you coming in the room to pull down, to tear down, to pluck up, to pluck out, to build and to plant. You coming to slay. Okay. And so your position cannot change regardless to how the people respond or don't respond to you. And you can't worry about if the people, you know, uh, well, we doing warfare and this praise and, and they're worshiping is the people going, what they going to say? It don't matter what they say. You're there to do a job. You're there to intercede in war so that those heavens can be open. So those people can be healed and delivered and set free. So when you are ministering from this place of dominion and power, you can't be unintentional where you're just going through the motions. You know how people stand up there and they're just, uh, you know, half doing the moves and they're not really focused and they look at all around to see who's watching them and they looking at the leader and, and they like, I hope I can follow and, and they not really trying to follow or, or they don't like the moves the leader is doing. So they just going through the motions and waiting on it, their turn to lead so they can, uh, lead and prove that, Hey, we should have been doing these moves and you know, or whatever you can't be in unintentional. Okay. 
Uh, you can't dance with laziness. That's why I said that part of our fasting uh, includes uh, working out in four times a, a, a week. As a, You can't say that you're a dancer and you don't get up and dance before the Lord or you don't uh, have some type of exercise register, regimen where you're keeping yourself in shape. Because the Lord can call on you at any time, even if it's not your Sunday to minister. He can say, I want you to get up and, and minister uh, or what have you. And if you're not in a place to produce the energy needed where the Holy Spirit can really utilize you, the uh, demons will choke you. They will suffocate you. You know, you will be coughing while you're trying to uh, minister and dance. And uh, you'll be huffing and puffing and on and on and on. And you can't really take up territory if your body is not physically equipped to minister, okay? Uh, you can't be dancing with sluggardness and laziness. You can't be uh, fearful, uh, fearful of the people, insecure, uh, uh, have low to self to no confidence uh, or what have you. You got to know who you are. You got to have the, uh, that mindset that I reign in dominion and in power. So you must be very intentional. You must be very intentional to try to pick up the move that the, um, the leader is doing, you have to be intentional to searching out the atmosphere. We're going to talk about that in a minute and, uh, and even searching out what, what's going on. And if God is in the room and if he ain't in the room, how you going to bring him in the room? Your moves need to be precise and clear. It's not a time to be cute. It's not a time to, you know, or what have you, uh, your, 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 your hands are swords, your feet, you know, they, they are daggers. You you got to have that mindset. And so even how you position your hands, the, the movements that you do, they need to be precise and clear. So people know what you're ministering. They can receive the word of God that's coming through you. And so that enemy know what you're ministering. They can receive the word of God through you and run up out of that region. Okay, you got to trust your teammates and flowing uh, from the spirit. So one of the things that we do, if I'm sensing a move and I'm sensing a shift that's occurring, I may tell the tell the leader uh, that the person that's dancing, uh, I'm sensing this. Uh, I, I'm sensing that the that we need to come against this spirit, or I'm I'm sensing that we need to shift and do more uh, harder moves, or we need to go into worship, or we need to dance from a place of the joy of the Lord, or we need to dance, uh, from a place of knowing our dominion in the Lord or what have you. And I may ask to lead. Can I lead for a few minutes, uh, to, uh, bring us into that? Or I'll say, I'll just stand behind you and intercede for you while you're leading us into that. Okay. And so that's how we switch out leaders. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, and, and, and the one, you're not just standing up there and you're not really producing any effective ministry that is leading us where we're having dominion, but you're trusting that, okay, my team member felt that they heard that we need to dance from a place of joy. So let me step back and let them come up and dance. Okay. So you're trusting your leader. You're, you're, you're all, everyone is dancing from a place of boldness and being authoritative. They're, they're, they're knowing who they are in God. They're confident in God. They're secure that God has chosen and equipped them as dance ministers. So that's so very important. You can't be a dance minister and be like, I'm shy. Uh, I'll, um, I don't like to stand in front of people. Well, how are you going to minister and dance? So you have to get delivered from those things. I'll, I'm afraid. So you have to get delivered from the spirit of fear. I feel like people are going to talk about me. So you got to get delivered from that because if you're going to be a dance minister, you got to be bold. You got to be confident. I don't know if you all have watched so you think you could dance, but if they, they have fear, and all of those things. The judges called those things out. I could tell that you were scared today and you didn't really dance with your full potential uh, or what have you. Uh, we, uh, 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 when, we, when you do that, even in the church, uh, demons don't respond to you. They don't, they, they not fleeing. They're not releasing the people because they like, oh, you in fear. So you on our side uh, or, or whatever. You, you have something in you that's a part of us. So we can stay here. OK, so you have to have understand that you have authority. You have to understand that uh, you have power and dominion. And when you are getting up to dance, you are coming to intercede, to war and to beat down devils. 
Okay. And please understand that devils are always intentional. First Peter five and eight says that the enemy, uh, God encourages us to be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil roams, he roams around as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. So the enemy, he's going around like a roaring lion seeking who he can take out. That word devour actually means to consume destructively. It also means um, to consume recklessly or deliberately or to totally engulf. So the enemy, the devil is walking around seeing who he can prowl on, who he can overthrow, kill, steal and destroy and totally devour such that there is not even any inkling that you existed. So that's got to be our mindset about our dance ministry, that when we get up to minister and dance, we're coming to consume darkness. We're coming to consume uh, demonic powers. We're coming to consume all evil, all sicknesses, all diseases, all heaviness, all depression, all mental illness, all frustration, all stress, anything that's binding people and binding the atmospheres and the community we're coming to totally engulf those things totally swallow them up as if they never existed before okay so that's very important um let's talk about intentionality just a little bit more now the dictionary.com defines intentional as something that's done on purpose okay something that's done uh on purpose with the uh, capacity and the mind uh, that this is very important. Okay. Um, it also it uh, 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 means pointing beyond itself as a consciousness or a sign. So when you're being intentional, you're saying that I am a, a conscious uh, uh, perception of God. I am a conscious truth of God. You're also saying that you are a sign of God. Uh, so if you're just standing up there going through the motions and you're insecure and inferior, you're saying that's what God is. And I know that's not true because God is all, he know who I am, who he is. He say, I'm the great I am. So he know who he is. I'm the one who gives life. I'm the one who take it away. He says, there is no other God before me. There is no other God like me. So there ain't, if anything, God is cocky. He, he, he ain't no fear or anything security in God. So, uh, when you're up there saying that you are a conscious truth of God and you are a sign of God, it should be manifesting in your dance. Okay. So intentional dancing doesn't necessarily mean you're dancing harder or sharper as though that is important, but intentional dancing means that you're dancing on purpose with a purpose. So as you are searching out praise and worship, you want to search out what is the purpose of praise and worship assignment for this day. So if we were to be dancing on Sunday, uh, we come in early, 15, 30 minutes early. We're searching out what's the purpose of the, of the day. What is, what is the assignment of the Lord? Actually, if you're a leader, you should be searching this out during the week. Uh, what is God's purpose on Sunday for praise and worship? Okay. Uh, what does God want to do in the land, in the region, in the atmosphere, in the people, in the service, in the community, and even sometimes in the nation? Because really, JGM International, they are international ministry. So uh, really, as you are ministering for that ministry, uh, um, anything that you are producing for God in that ministry has an international um, effect Okay, so you want to search out what is God doing? What and why does God want to do it? And so a lot of times we're just focused on uh praising and worshiping when really we should be focused on what does God want to cleanse in the people today? What strongholds does he want to break out? What strongholds do he want to break out in the atmosphere? What principalities, if any, do we need to come against today in this region? Uh, those things are very important. Okay. Also, when you're being intentional, you want to focus on what are your weapons of the day? 
Okay, so movements, flags, tambourines, Michigans, praise hoops, glory shawls, staffs, swords, shofars, billows, crowns, banners. Those are always necessary weapons, okay? Uh, and they have to be where you can reach them because a soldier is not in the middle of a war looking for his gun. He know where his gun at. Okay, uh, they know where their gun, they know where their grenades are. So where are your grenades? Uh, your, your tambourine can't be in the car uh, when, when praise and worship is going forth. And God say, grab your tambourine and beat the devil down with it. You're like, oh, it's in the car. Oh, it's at home. Oh, we forgot to bring the, the bag with all the, the flags in it today. Uh, where are your weapons? What are your weapons? What do God want to use? And even even putting those weapons in a place ahead of time before service so that you can grab them as God leads you to use them in praise and worship. That is so very important. Okay. Uh, also, what are your weapons as far as movement and overtaking the territory quickly and asserting your God-given authority over the people, the land, and the atmosphere? So this is very important. Okay, so you have your weapons as far as your 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 praise hoops and tambourines and things like that. But you also should have your weapons as far as movement. A lot of times when we think about movement and dance, we're thinking about ballet movement, mind movement, modern dance, jazz dance. And those things are great. But remember, I said that you are a uh, a soldier. You are in the army of the Lord. You are an intercessor in the Lord. So your mindset really has to be warfare also as you're using ballet, modern dance, mime, and all these other dances that, that, that uh, genres, okay? So do you go in like a Steph Bomber? Uh, in regarding your movement. So a step bomber goes in subtle and undetected and then they blast the enemy. So your movements uh, will be subtle and unassuming. And then as the Holy Spirit lead, you shift and begin to blast the enemy with warfare movements. And a, a scripture for a Steph Bomber would probably be Psalms 18, 28 and 29. It says, for thou will light my candle, the Lord, my God will enlighten my darkness for by thee. I have run through a troop and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. Okay. So you just, you, you, you coming in subtle and then you just blast the devil. Okay. Do you send in some snipers or do every one move, um, and enter into praise and worship as snipers and your movements annihilate the enemy in a sniper fashion? If you look up snipers or you watch war movies, you know that snipers, they hide and move about strategically where they actually blend into the environment. So they may put a whole bunch of leaves over their head, but their gun is sticking out and they're focused on discerning their target and taking their target out quickly. Uh, so do you move in strategically where you're, you look like you're blending in, you may be paying attention to what the praise team is singing and you may be doing moves, uh, related to what they're singing. And then all of a sudden you just shift into doing warfare movements or doing intercessory movements or, or movements that decree and declare to, uh, to really annihilate the enemy. A scripture reference for that would be Joshua 23 and 10. It says, one man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord, your God. He that, uh, uh, he, it is that fighteth for you as he has promised. And that word chase actually, uh, means to pursue, to hunt, to attend closely to, to persecute and to put to flight. So actually when you coming in as a stealth bomber, you, you are seeking to persecute and put to flight the enemy. You're hunting down that enemy. So you're focused on what that target is and you're taking them out. Okay. Or do you minister through the power of the Lord? And I'm going to send you this teaching. So I'm putting it in your spirit. Then I'm going to send it to you. You're going to have to go back and study it. 
Okay. So do you go in like uh, uh, and minister under the power of the Lord and you do movements that actually chase down the enemy? Leviticus 26 and 8 says, and five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put to flight 10,000. Okay. And your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. So this is a different type, different than a sniper as you're operating through the power, the force and the promise of the Lord. Okay. Cause if you was to read this scripture, you would know that God had promised them that they would overthrow their enemies. So whatever is clogging up the land, clogging up the atmosphere, binding the people, uh, you are standing on the promises of God to, uh, to, to, to chase down the enemy and break his power off of whatever you're coming against so that his presence can come in or or do you dance and move from a place of ambushing the enemy so when you think about ambushing the enemy there has to be a plan from the lord and how to take your enemy out so often these plans are given to someone in the ministry days ahead of time. That's why I said if you are a leader, especially, uh, you should be uh, praying about services ahead of time uh, so that God can give you a strategic plan. Also, even if you're not a leader and you're very serious about your dance ministry, you should be searching out praise and worship. What is God wanting to say? What is God wanting to do uh, in asking God for a plan to really bring in his presence? It's, it's time out for coming to church and nobody getting delivered and healed and set free. You should want to be seeing miracle signs and wonders. So as someone who is, uh, sets the atmosphere, you, you are one who, uh, uh, are supposed to be setting that atmosphere so those miracles could it signs and wonders to come in so you want to be searching god out for how do you do that what how do you want us to come against the enemy so that your presence can come in the strong today how do you want us to actually take over the atmosphere so your presence could be strong today the lord may tell you that put flaggers at each corner of the church and they start off flagging while the rest of their dancers dance in the front. The Lord may say every, all the dancers start dancing from the back and dance their way up to the front. The Lord may say everybody dance freestyle for the first five minutes of the service or whatever. He's giving you a strategic plan of how to combat the enemy. He may tell everybody to start marching around, you know, uh, y'all dance while marching around uh, the, the sanctuary uh, in unison together. So he will give you foolish uh, um, uh, plans that will confound the wise. And so you will find uh, information about... Uh, ambushing the enemy in Jeremiah 51 and 12 and Joshua 8 3 through 25 and I'm not going to read those because they're very long but in those passages of scripture you will find that God gave them strategies for ambushing the enemy so as a dancer God will give you strategies as a warrior he'll give you strategies to ambush the enemy or do you decree and declare through movement I do a lot of decreeing and declaring through movement because that's the anointing that's on my life and so uh, I do a lot of commanding and establishing moves uh, uh, for example, pointing, directing, you might, God may have you direct demons out. He might have you assert his, 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 his name and his power in the atmosphere. Job 22 and 28 says, you said decree a thing and it should be established in the earth. And so, uh, you decree it and declare with movement. And you're basically just asserting that God is ruler. He's governing governor. You're establishing him. You're establishing his name you're establishing his will in the place okay uh, also you can stand on and minister the word of God. So God may give you a scripture. He may, he may, uh, give you a scripture to share with everybody at the beginning of the service, or he may give it to you in the middle of the service. And you may hear the Lord, you may hear the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so you may whisper to the person that's leading. I hear the scripture, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to start dancing through the joy of the Lord because that's going to bring strength in the place. And then as you begin to minister through joy, it releases strength and then everybody else in the in the audience becomes stronger and more powerful and encouraged in God and so he may give you uh the word to stand on 
okay? Uh, and he may even have you prophesying and releasing that word uh, or what have you. And some of the scriptures uh, for standing on the word of God is Psalms 119 and 105. It says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when you're dancing, you're actually a representation of the scripture because your feet uh, or, or, or manifesting the light of God and the truth, the truth of God. Okay. Also Hebrews 4, 12 and 13 for the word of God is quick and living and powerful, active, sharper than a two edged sword, piercing, even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow. And is a discerner and a judge and thoughts and tense of the heart. So if when you stand on scripture, that scripture is going into the atmosphere and it's dividing whatever is not of God from what is of God. And it's making it clear. To the people, it's making clear to the atmosphere, it's making it clear to the heavenlies and to principalities and powers, and it's it's causing a, a division to go forth so that anything that's not like God can be pushed out and everything that is of God can come in. And so standing on the word can be very uh, beneficial and important. And even knowing the theme of, you know, if you're going to minister at conferences and stuff, knowing the theme of that conference and studying that theme so you can stand on the word and help to bring that revelation to pass. So even the JGM conference is about mantles this year. So studying scriptures on mantles and uh, mantles being released and, and so that you can really produce an anointing and, uh, and authority uh, to bring that forth because you have those scriptures inside of you that are, that are illuminating the truth of what God wants to reveal in that conference. So that's very important as well. Okay. Uh, doing praise and worship. They may, uh, the, the person that's doing praise and worship, he may speak out scriptures over the atmosphere. He may speak out scriptures uh, uh, over the mic. And so you want to make sure that you're cognizant of that and picking up on those scriptures and then using those scriptures, uh, to, to break through in dance. So that's another way that you can use the word, uh, uh, as a swore against the enemy okay uh, or you could use uh, uh, the power and execution of praise to judge and wreak vengeance on the enemy so soldiers are quiet sometimes they are but for the most time most of the uh, time soldiers are loud they yell they sound alarms you know they they shout they 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 uh they they celebrate and on and on you know they do have their instances when they're trying to be stealth bombers or snipers or you know they're getting in position they're quiet but they're not quiet all the time okay so high praises serves as double edged swords against the enemy and you can read about that in Psalms one one forty nine. It says, let the high praises of God be in their mouths and the two-edged swords in their throats. Uh, I mean, the two-edged sword in their hands to wreak vengeance upon the nations and chastisement upon the people to, defy, to bind their kingdoms, principalities with chains and their nobles nobles or powers with feathers of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. And so you can use praise in, in praise movements to bind kingdoms, to bind demonic uh, spirits, uh, uh, and, to, and to release judgment and vengeance upon them. Okay. Or do you dance inside the refuge and strength and fortress of God inside the glory of God? Psalms 91, seven and eight says a thousand shall fall by my side, by your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you only with, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. And so, uh, as you get into that place where you're dancing in the refuge and the fortress of God, uh, the enemy can't even touch you because the presence of the Lord creates a hedge around you and in psalms 84 and 11 it says god is a sun and a shield the lord will give grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from them that walk up rightly if you actually study psalms um 8 84 and 11 that word sun s-u-n actually mean one of the definitions is notch battlement 
And I want you to write that down because a notch battlement is actually a castle or a fort. Or it's like a military fortification. I want you to write that, write that down and Google it because I want you to see a picture of what a notch battlement is. So, uh, and you're standing inside of that notch battlement and uh, it's protecting you. So the glory is like protecting you when you dance in the refuge of God and in the strength of God and where nothing can penetrate you. And then you're blasting the devil from that place. You're blasting the enemy and anything that's not like God from that place. So you can actually dance inside the glory. Uh, you should actually be living in the glory, but that's a whole nother teaching. Uh, but, uh, that's why coming into those heavenly places and dancing inside those heavenly places is so important. Uh, because if you get inside the glory of God, the enemy can't touch you and you can wreak all kind of havoc on him. Or, um, can, do you recognize that the enemy is already overtaking uh, taking you, overtaking everybody, and now you have to enter praise and worship by smiting and terrorizing and traumatizing and even ripping the enemies to sh shreds. So sometimes you'll come into an atmosphere and it's already overtaken. Everybody is bound. They're heavy. They're depressed. People are coming in hopeless. The atmosphere is depressed. And you recognize that, hey, God, God, uh, the, 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 the devil is, uh, in in the in our midst and so we have to take over him and so you would have to dance through deuteronomy 28 and 7 where it says the lord shall cause thy enemies to rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face they shall come out against thee one way and flee before these seven ways so you may go to a church and minister praise and worship and it's the it's 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 oppressed Okay, and so you realize, hey, I got to go out here and smite these devils uh, or what have you. And so uh, when you go out and smite them, uh, you just know that the enemy might he come at you one way. He going to flee seven ways. So any way that you come and you're being intentional, you have authority in God. You have power in God. You have dominion in God. So you must understand that you are a warrior that carries the presence of God, that prays and worship and uh, 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 God, and you have to uh, posture yourself uh, in taking the kingdom by force. All right. So in Jeremiah 51 and 20, it says, Thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war. For with you I will break in pieces the nations, and with you I will destroy kingdoms. So really, that's a, that's a dance scripture. God is saying that you as a dancer, you are his battle axe and his weapons of war. With you, with your body, with your movement, I'm going to take up, I will, I'm going to break nations. The demonic nations, demonic kingdoms into pieces. I'm going to destroy demonic kingdoms with you, the dancer. Okay. Isaiah 41, 15 and 6, it says, behold, I will make thee talking about the dancer, a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shalt make the hills as shall. Thou shalt fan them. So you know how in church they use a fan and they're fanning themselves. So even in your movement of just fanning the enemy, the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Talking about you, the dancer. Okay, Psalm 7, 11 through 13, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. You the dancer, he has bent you like a bow and made you ready. He had also prepared for him the instruments of death. The dancer, you are the instrument of death that God has prepared. He has ordained his arrows against the persecutors. So he has ordained you to dance so that he can release you like arrows against the persecutors, those that persecute uh, his people, those that persecute his name. 
Okay. Jeremiah 50 and 25. The Lord has opened up his armory and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Indignation means fury and wrath. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. So God has released you, the anointing over your life, to be a weapon of indignation against the enemy. Job 38, 21 through 23. Hast thou entered into the treasures of snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of hell, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle? Now, that scripture in the message version, it reads, Have you ever traveled to where the snow is made? Seen the vault where hell is stockpiled, the arsenals of hell and snow that I have kept in readiness for times of trouble and battle and war. So in this scripture, God is that word treasure actually means store house of armory. Uh, snow actually halts discomforts and freezes things. Okay, and then that word hell, hell actually releases judgment and destruction. So God is saying, have you entered the storehouses where I prepared and make my weapons? And do you even realize that I have been preparing you, the dancer, in my storehouses of armor for such a time as this? All all the dancers, dance ministers are being released in this season as weapons from heaven's storehouse. Okay. He has prepared you as an instrument of death, as warring glory carriers for such a time as this. So it's so very important um, to dance intentionally and not uh, from what you feel, but beyond what you feel to seeing beyond being conscious in what you're doing. And even knowing that you are that spiritual sign and wonder and knowing that you're dancing beyond your natural ability, but in, uh, but dancing through a spiritual supernatural ability in the Holy Spirit. Okay. It's also important to know that as you are intentional, that you are drawing from the Holy Spirit while operating in that dominion and in that power, uh, as a frontline intercessor. Okay. So those things are very important. Uh, being intentional also means knowing you are a spiritual sign and being aligned with God so that you are a sign of what he desires. Okay. For the people, for the region, for the land, and you can only achieve this level of ministry through the spirit realm. Cause the word says now the Lord is a spirit and where the spirit is, there is liberty. Also, we have that scripture, John 24, 24 says, God is a spirit and where they, they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. So we know that liberty and truth breeds freedom. It breeds clarity, direction of the Lord and his will. And it, it breeds the ability to see and to discern. Okay, things from God's perspective. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about discernment then I'm going to be through. Okay, so discernment actually means to be decisive or to discriminate, to be a discerner, okay, to be skilled at judging, to be skilled at uh, 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 deciding things, okay. Uh, when we discern, we're actually disputing and opposing. We're kind of hesitating, uh, searching things out. Some people call it instincts. Uh, discerning definitely goes beyond this instincts because it's a spiritual grappling as opposed to an intuition. Okay. Um, and this actually brings us back to that Jeremiah scripture where I talked about that we are called to uh, root out, pull down, to destroy, to throw, and to build. Because you need discernment uh, to be able to discern what spirits that you're going to come against in the atmosphere and what, uh, what you need to be intentional about for that day. 
Okay. If you read the book of Jeremiah, you know that Jeremiah needed that intentionality. He needed confidence. He needed boldness and keen discernment to complete his assignments. Okay. He had to know that he was a prophet of the Lord and he had a dominion, authority, and power in God. Okay, if you uh, look up a scripture uh, for discernment, one great scripture is Hebrews 5, 13 and 14. It says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil so that word exercise actually means to practice naked in the games it means to be trained like an athlete it also means to exercise vigorously in a way either with your body or with your mind Okay, so before you start ministering and dance and while you're while you're ministering dance, you should be discerning what God wants. You should be discerning what his intent, his heart, his motive is for the people, the atmosphere and the region. That means that your assignment does not start when the service starts, but, you know, it starts with fasting, building your body up, uh, training your body to be a dancer, training your body to sustain in dance ministry, sustain in being able to praise and worship. Okay, uh, building up your your gifts. So whatever your gifts are in the spirit, figuring out what your gifts are, you may have. Uh, the gift of dreams, you may have the gift of, of, of healing, you may have the gift of deliverance, you may have the gift of prophecy. Uh, it's important to train and build up those gifts so that they can even manifest through your dance. Okay. And, uh, uh, let's see. And as you dance, you already know that your dominion, your authority, your power uh, comes uh, from God and that uh, uh, you're focused on pulling down those strongholds and open up the heavenlies. So you have to establish yourself in the heavenlies because your movements become easy and you're able to praise and worship from that supernatural place. I talked about that early, uh, earlier uh, in the in the um, teaching okay so it's important to really uh, know that praise and worship ministry is just not about getting up and dancing but it is really about taking over territory and really bringing in a presence of God where people can be set free the atmosphere can be set free and where uh, principalities and powers can be displaced in that community so God's presence can reign in that area okay so that's the end of my teaching if you have any questions you can unmute your phone and I can answer those questions at this time if you have any comments as well you can unmute your phone and I can at, at, um, respond to comments as well Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, you could just eat fruits and vegetables uh, and cut out sweets and cut out breads. Um, you can also um, um, do things like no TV during the week or something like that or only watch TV for an hour. Or, or, so that's something that you can do with your, your fast to adjust it. Uh, uh, who am I talking to? Okay. Okay. Yes, so that's, uh, that would be good for the fast. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, does anybody else have any questions pertaining to the teaching? I know it was a lot.
Does it help you to understand praise and worship ministry better? Okay. Who is this? Who? Okay. Thank you, Mercedes. Does it? Does anyone else have any comments or questions about the teaching? This is the time to ask. There's no stupid question or comment. Okay, that's Liz. Oh, I know your voice, so okay. Hi, Liz. Uh, <laughs> anybody else? Okay. 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 Yeah, you may have to water down some of the teaching, but a lot of it they would understand if you taught them in a way as if you were talking about an army or or a uh, a group that was in ministry together like we're a gang so when we go up here we're we're we you know we're a gang for the lord we're an army for the lord and um and so there's protocol for what we do is not just something fun it's actually uh it's ministry unto the lord and so we have to uh, be respectful and considerate of how we present praise and worship unto him because he's a king and and so you can kind of explain it in those fashions and then explain to them you know as a dancer for the lord is different than the world because you're actually ministering so this is no different as if um pastor got up and minister a word the only difference is you're ministering through your dance and they minister through the preach word but both of them are words coming from the lord and so just like they can't get up and just present anything you can't get up and just present anything and so you can you can kind of break it down to them in that fashion and so as a minister we uh, as a minister of dance we have a protocol for how we do things and so when we come up we want to be intentional we want to make sure we're focused and really giving our all to god and 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 you can even cleanse kids out because a lot of times kids will have shyness and they will have you know fears and, and things of that nature but they do have a heart to dance and so you have to do deliverance over them to cleanse those things out but then also teach them that when you dance uh, unlike the world it's about um dancing unto god and it's about uh you know you could explain demons to them and it's about breaking down uh, uh demons and things that hurt people and things that 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 hold people hostage and and things of that nature and so our focus is not on the people so we're not worried about what they think we're worried about what does god think is, is god going to be pleasing with what we give to him and so our focus is on god not on whether our mama like our moves or you know whatever so as you continue to ingrain that in them and constantly teach that to them and even on Sundays and I think parents need to be taught because a lot of times parents put kids in in dance ministry and stuff at church because they want them to be seen and so they can say my kid danced on Sunday and on and on and so they need to be taught that this is not this is not uh just uh a good social club this is ministry you know or whatever this is what we are doing 
when we go forth in ministry. Because the truth of the matter is when they, they have meetings when their kid is on the soccer team and is on, on the basketball team, and they're told what the protocol is, what the requirements are, what the expectations are, and on and on and on. And so they know, and they know that their kid is there to win. Their kid is not there to be seen, but, you know, just to be seen, but they're there to win a game. They're worth there to be the best that they can be, and that needs to be the mindset in the church that we instill in the children, that we are here to win for God. We're here to be the most effective dancer for God that we can be, uh, that we want to present ourselves even in uniforms, because a lot of times kids get stuck with just wearing T-shirts because parents don't want to invest, but then they want to, you know, spend a hundred dollars on some soccer shoes we we got to really change their mindset so really teaching the parents and doing a training with the parents would be good so they would know that this is ministry and this is not just um, a, a good time for the kid to to be away from me where I can get some free moments and they can just uh, look good on Sunday doing doing a dance or whatever does that make sense so so yeah, so so teaching that and then even the more that you teach the, the kid that this is ministry and you instill it in them, the more they will begin to um, manifest that. And it's good that they, they start off as children because just imagine what they'll be as they grow up in that ministry and in that revelation because nobody's really teaching that revelation. So I don't really have a... Uh, have a teaching, but I have it in my in my head. <laughs> but also, I can send you this teaching. I can email this to you, and you can distribute it to whomever, uh, because it is important to just keep studying it, getting those scriptures. That's why on our fast, we are we are um, declaring out those scriptures because really we need to be filled up with the revelation of who we are as warriors, glory carriers and warriors of God as dancers so that that authority and that dominion can really minister through our dance. Because a lot of times we come to practices and we think it's all about the movement, but truthfully, uh, I'm not over a dance ministry now, but when I used to be over a dance ministry, we would come to practice and do deliverance on one another. We would lay before the Lord. We would study scripture and just on and on. And, you know, we wouldn't, some, some days we wouldn't even do movement. And so when we get up and minister before people and they see the power and authority, they think it's dan it, they think it's the movements. It's not the movements. It's the fact that we have the deli deliverance ministry and intercessory and prayed over the region and prayed over one another and prayed over the service that we're ministering at and, uh, you know, and, and, and laid before the Lord and on and on and on. Cause we want to be a clear, a, a pure and, and, and clean vessel for him to be able to minister through uh, uh, or what have you. And so uh, a lot of times it's that. And then we build ourselves up in whatever it is that we believe that God wanted us to do. So if I thought if I thought that if I minister next week and God wanted me to release the glory, I'm going to go get 10 scriptures on the glory. And I'm going to be declaring those scriptures over myself, you know, in, in his presence, his fullness of joy at his right hand, his pleasures forevermore. Now, I'm in his presence. I have full this of joy I, I i have his pleasures for everyone i'm a, you know i'm going to be declaring those things over myself and over the atmosphere uh, uh and, and even the region that i'm going to go minister in uh so that i can fill it up with the word I, you, know, you know the the dance is secondary that's a talent really uh, the gift and anointing really that's on your life is whatever you're called to be, whether that be a prophet, a minister, a evangelist, a teacher, an apostle, uh, or what have you. And then the word is what really enlightens all of that enlightens your talent and makes room for you enlightens the gifting and calling that's on your life but most of the time it's dance ministries we focus on the movement when and then you know we're doing great movement but nobody's getting delivered nobody's getting set free uh uh or, or what have you uh because it's a blessing it's that was such a blessing but there is no breakthrough yeah Anybody else have questions? 
And kids can stand out scriptures too. You could give them a couple of scriptures and have them, uh, their parents read it. And then they can read it out loud before they go to bed every night. It don't have to be a long, a lot of scriptures or whatever, but a couple. And they need to know why they're going to minister. Just like you know, I'm going to minister for this, such and such. When we minister in uh, at the Watchdog, we're 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 focused on releasing, um, uh, opening up the heavens so those mantles can be released, so that we can be established in them. We're also taking over territory in that and opening up the heavens greater in that region. Okay, and the principalities in Arizona is crazy because I've been there a couple of times. They crazy, so uh, it'll be a fight for the next twenty one days, which is why I uh, I I suggested the no food fast because uh, emotions are going to flare high. So if your emotions start to flare high, just know that the enemy is just trying to distract you. He's trying to draw you into not operating in the spirit, but operating in your emotions or whatever. And this is even for the Muncie people as well, even though you may not be going to Arizona, uh, because we have been experiencing a lot of this here uh, as well. And so it's just really a season that we're in right now where the enemy wants to distract us and make us doubt God and lack faith in God and really operate in our emotions where we're not really tuned in to the truth of what's really going on and the reality, which is that we are really breaking through to uh, a, a greater glory and a greater dimension of miracle signs and wonders in this season. So I would Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, you could just say I'm going up here to sing or whatever, or you could just step away. Um, uh, uh, if I know that you're one that wearing multiple hats, that's fine. Um. So I know that you you'll probably be singing and doing other things. Uh, I believe Amanda is on the on the uh, intercessory team or the altar team. I'm not sure who else is, and so if there's others that are going to be helping in other areas, if they could just let me know that ahead of time, then I'll be aware. Because then I can be praying already to close any of those doors to declare the enemy won't be coming in through those doors uh, or, or using that as an entry uh, or what have you. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Hi, Melissa. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Thank you for letting me know that. I I have that written down. Uh, I'm writing that down right now. Okay. Uh huh. Yes, the two, yes, the two T-shirts uh, were the ones that that she talked about. Uh, I believe they're twenty dollars. I could be wrong on that, and so you want to make sure that she has your name and stuff, or you may already have the T-shirts. I know one of the T-shirts we already have, uh, but if you need to order those, make sure your name is on the list to order. Uh, and then for Saturday night, we was going to wear a kingdom shifters t-shirts. So we'll have those t-shirts. Um, I think the night, um, um, I think Saturday night is the black shirt. The Saturday is black t-shirts. I want to say that it's black. So if you don't, you could still keep on your other shirt if you want to, but I know if you want to refresh, then you might want to purchase a kingdom shifter t-shirt. So and we'll, yeah, we'll have those there. Yeah, we'll have them with us. Uh, 
Um, I do go to dance where let me make sure that's what it's called. Dancewear.com to purchase my plaza pants and the like. I think it's dancewear.com. Uh huh. Yes, I don't. I don't recommend. Uh, I I would recommend getting them from. Dancewearsolutions.com uh, Just because they last longer. Because you could buy cheap, but they don't always last. Or um, let me email you some sites that you can get them from that are cheap, but it's good quality. Yeah, I'll just email it to you. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, does anybody else have any questions? No? Okay. If not, I am going to pray in, uh, over the lesson and then we'll end this call. Uh, we will have our next call. On next Tuesday, it'll be seven o'clock Arizona time. For Muncie, that's ten o'clock. So uh, we we're gonna we're gonna be starting at exactly seven o five or ten o five, depending on where you are, because it's late for us, um, even though it's early for some of you all. So please try to be on time for that call. But next week we're going to talk about operating in the power of God. And then the week after that we're going to talk about discerning demonic spirits uh, through dance. So next week we'll talk about operating in the power of God through dance. And then the following week we're going to talk about coming against demonic spirits. Okay. So I'm just going to pray. Lord, I just thank you for this teaching, Lord God. I just uh, uh, decree and declare that it has gone forth, Lord God, with power, uh, that it has gone forth, Lord God, like a two-edged sword piercing the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, Lord God. I decree that every person that receives of this word is uh, has a clear revelation of who they are as your kingdom warrior, Lord God, and as your glory carrier, I shift their dance ministry to a new level and new dimension of understanding their dominion, their power, and their authority in you, Lord God. I pull down every stronghold of fear. I pull down every stronghold of laziness and sluggardness right now in the name of Jesus. I pull down every stronghold of insecurity, Lord God. I pull down every stronghold of hesitancy right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pull down strongholds of shyness right now. I break their power and their authority right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pull down every stronghold of questioning who they are as your dancers in this hour and in this season. Season, Lord God, I snuff that out in the spirit and the natural realm. I break every power and stronghold of religion and tradition, Lord God, that has come against their dance ministry for such a time as this. I cancel this power and it'll, its authority right now in the name of Jesus. And I decree that they are rising up all the more as your glory carries. They're rising up all the more as your intercessors and your warriors in this season, Lord God. I thank you for every scripture that has been rooted and grounded in them. 
I decree they are becoming your scriptures right now. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, they're becoming your instruments of death. They're becoming, Lord God, your weapons of war. They're becoming your sharp arrows. They're becoming, Lord God, your sharp instruments right now in the name of Jesus. I decree, Lord God, clear revelation and understanding is coming forth, uh, Lord God, and even uh, uh, overtaking their bones, overtaking their ligaments, overtaking their muscles right now in the name of Jesus. Your very DNA as a dance minister is infusing and consuming them right now, Lord God, and clarity is coming to their bodies. Agility and youthfulness is coming to their bodies right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and they're rising up all the more in authority and in the dominion to slay demons and to set the captives free. I decree a consumption of your glory, Lord God, to produce miracles, signs, and wonders to movement. That even as you your your presence moved upon the face of the earth, Lord God, and brought forth light, brought forth, Lord God, production, Lord God, brought forth, uh, Lord Jesus, the world itself, Lord God, I decree a creative and a recreative anointing is coming upon them as your spirit is just stirring in them tonight, Lord God, stirring in them right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, pushing out darkness, pushing out contamination, pushing out diversion, pushing out perversion, pushing out lust, Lord God, pushing out emotionalism, Lord Jesus, pushing out addictions, Lord God, cleansing them of all lawlessness and debauchery and anything that will contaminate, uh, Lord God, uh, your glory from going forth in pureness in them, Lord God. I lose a desire all the more, Lord God, to submit themselves uh, under the mantle and the authority of who they are as your dance ministers in this hour, Lord God. I decree a desire to resist the world, Lord God, to resist the things of the world, Lord Jesus, and to humble themselves under your mighty hand, humble themselves under your will, Lord God. Well, I decree uh, an enlightenment and even supernatural downloads, Lord God, as they pray and as they sleep, Lord God, of who they are in your kingdom, what you desire of them, Lord God. And I decree they are lining up with it physically. They're lining up with it emotionally. They're lining up with it spiritually. They're lining up with it relationally, Lord God. They're riding up with it spiritually in the name of Jesus. They're shifting out of mediocre dance ministry. They're shifting out of, Lord God, a mediocre walk with you, Lord Jesus, to really wanting to be used for your greater works and for your glory, Lord God. I decree their mindset about church and church services are shifting and changing right now, Lord God. And they're just not going to church to praise and worship you, but they're going to church to be set free and to set captives free, Lord God, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils, Lord God, and to freely give what you are giving to them in their private time as they cultivate their lifestyle with you, Lord God. Freely give that to others. Freely give that to the atmosphere. Freely release that into the region, Lord God. Freely release that into the communities and even the nations, Lord God, to which you are granting to their hands. I just decree a shifting all the more is taking place in them, Lord God, even in the children, uh, Lord Jesus. I decree that they're being cultivated as your ministers at a young age. They're being cultivated as your apostles, as your prophets, as your evangelists, as your teachers, uh, Lord God, as your pastors, even at a young age, of knowing how to, uh, Lord God, uh, respect your presence, Lord Jesus, know how to respect the ministry and the call that is on their lives, Lord God, and knowing how to operate in it to produce your will and to establish your name and your authority in the earth, Lord God. I decree that right now in the name of Jesus. I speak of refreshing over each person, Lord God. I decree supernatural blessings is coming up on them for supernatural energy and stamina, Lord God and even a desire 
Lord God, to resist anything, uh, Lord Jesus, that is hindering uh, their ministry, uh, Lord God, hindering them, uh, Lord God, in, in, in losing weight, hindering them, uh, Lord God, in exercising, hindering them in preparing their temple, Lord God, for your glory. I rebuke spirits of infirmity right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke spirits of affliction right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke spirits, uh, Lord God, at that transgress, Lord. God is spirits of iniquity. I bind and cast out spirits of sickness and disease, incurable sicknesses and disease. I bind and cast them out of them. I rebuke these powers and authorities, Lord God, and declare that they're subject to your power right now in the name of Jesus. I command them to get out of your glory carriers. Get out of your dancers right now in the name of Jesus. And I decree your healing is overtaking them. Your deliverance is overtaking them. Their souls is being healed. Their hearts is being healed. Their minds are being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Their bodies are being healed. Their appetites are being healed and coming into alignment and balance with you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Generational curses of sickness and disease, uh, Lord God, is being broken off of their lives right now, uh, Lord Jesus. And they're becoming representations of your blessings, Lord God, physically, spiritually, emotionally, Lord God, uh, naturally, socially, and relationally, economically, Lord God, fight naturally and in every other way. Lord God, they are becoming representations of your generational blessings being passed down as heritage, Lord God, because they are your kingdom warriors, Lord Jesus. They are your glory carriers. So I just decree that over them right now, Lord God. I decree sweet sleep and divine rest even now, Lord God, a refreshing over them, Lord God. I decree they will wake up refreshed, Lord God, with a desire to fast, with a desire to pray, with a desire, Lord God, to declare your scriptures, with a desire to exercise, with a desire to eat right, Lord God. I declare that over them even now, Lord Jesus. I declare that they're shifting into this being a lifestyle, Lord God, of theirs even now, Lord God. I declare, Lord God, that every resistance that is being held against them is being broken even now, Lord God. And they're coming into a greater truth and reality, Lord God. Uh, a greater uh, a peace, Lord God, is stamina and standing in the truth of who you have said they are to be as your dance ministers, as your warriors, as your glory carriers. I say fill them up to the fullness and overflowing with your glory. Fill them up to, uh, to the full and overflowing with your dominion and with your power even now, with your enlightenment and greater revelation even now. Lord God, and I decree that they will rest in it, Lord Jesus, and that it will be an eternal work in them from this day forward. I just decree it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I will email you all. If I don't have your email, take down my email. I mean, take down my telephone number. 765-749-4913. That's 765-749-4913. And then email, uh, text me your email address so that I can send you the teaching and the websites to go to for the... Uh, for the clothing, for the garments, and if you um, and if you are go going to be ministering at Watchdog and you're not already receiving emails, let me know that as well so that I can send you the fast regimen and anything else that uh, the updates that we.